Yeah, today we are going to talk about the world's greatest sin. The world's greatest sin. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another great day. Another day you are giving to us. We have the bread of life. And we thank you for this wonderful opportunity of ministering to as many that will hear my voice. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. The world's greatest sin. What is the world's greatest sin? I believe many different answers will be given. Many, many different answers will be given when we ask, what is the world's greatest sin? You might have your answer. I might have my answer. So and so might have the answer. But I believe uh, we have to go into the Word of God. And when we get in the Word of God, we will get to know what is the world's greatest sin. Now, a young man who had a desire to enter into the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ came to one of the greatest preachers and uh, asked that the, um, the preacher asked the young man how uh, the young man had a desire to enter into the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the great preacher asked the young man, are you a Christian because you want to enter into the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ? And I believe the first convocation is, is, is uh, you have to be a Christian. And so the great preacher asks um, the young man, are you a Christian? Um, the young man replied, my parents were Christians and I have gone to church since I was a boy. Listen to it very carefully. And then the, the man of God, the great preacher, persisted, inquiring further, probing to know his background. And so the man of God persisted and said, Are you sure that you yourself a Christian? And then the young man replied, Well, um, I'm no great sinner. I don't commit any great crime. I don't care. I don't know that I have any great sins to confess. Uh, I don't smoke. And then uh, the young man began to list the catalog of sins, which um, Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 um, enumerated. So let, let's read Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. And here, these six sins the Lord is. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look. A lying thong, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devise wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sow discord among brethren. And so the young man begin to uh, lay that all these things, I don't fall victim, I don't do none of these. And so it means none of the seven sins that are, uh, you know, we identify the greater sin uh, than all the others. The young man said, "Well, I don't, I don't do any of these. Of these, I, I'm not involved in any of these things." Then the great preacher, the man of God, said, "No, those things don't fall, don't fill the picture of the greatest sin in the world." That's what the um, the great preacher said. None of those fall uh, into the greatest sin in the world. And then the Man of God persisted for that other young man, what is the greatest sin in the world? The great preacher asks because, because the young man wants to enter the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I believe he has to be aware of what um, he was going to enter into. And so the young, I mean, and so the preacher uh, said, ask the young man, what is the greatest sin in the world? Then the great preacher said, the greatest sin in the world will be to break the greatest commandment. What did it? He put, he, he put this question to the young man. I get the greatest sin in the world will be to break the greatest commandment. What did it be? I mean, the, man, the young man replied, yes, of course. And so now ask, which is the greatest commandment? And so he asked, which, he asked the young man, what is the greatest commandment? The young man replied, I don't know that I know. One listen to me right now, you may know that the greatest in the world. You may not know the greatest in the world. 
All right? Okay, soon you will find out how the young man was curious. And then the, I mean, the great man of God turned to the book of Matthew. Let's turn the book of Matthew 22, um, 37 to 39. Book of Matthew um, 22, 37 to um, 39. Okay. And I read the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy soul, with all thy mind, this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. Now to the young man, said the great man of God, which is the greatest commandment of all? The great preacher asked the young man, which is the greatest commandment? of all and they replied the young man said to love God with all your heart and soul and mind then to the young man asked do you love God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind do you love God so much that you will rather give you give God everything in the world including your life itself they were the question uh, the great man of God asked the young man. And the young man admitted that he falls short of the commandment. <laughs> so, after you know, this inquiry, after probing into the young man's background, the young man came to a realization that he fell short of the commandments of God. He fell short of the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Well, beloved, who is hearing me right now? This is what the young man admitted. That he fell short of the commandment of God. And then this is it. Then the great preacher said to the young man, If you break the greatest commandment in all the world, then what are you guilty of? Why? I might be guilty of the greatest sin. And this, this young man is a moral man. This young man was a moral man who was sick. Salvation. And so the young man was led to realize that he fell short of the commandments of God. And for that matter, the young man gave his love to Jesus Christ. Because he was led to realize how he fell short of the commandments of God. Now, let's listen to a similar story which is captured in Matthew 19, um, 16 to 22. A similar story of this young man. This is where Jesus Christ counseled a rich young ruler. This rich young ruler came to Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ counseled the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus Christ and said to Christ, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This is a similar story of the young man who wants to enter in the ministry of God. And so this young rich ruler came to Jesus Christ and said, You are a good teacher. What good thing should I do so that I may inherit the eternal life? Then Jesus Christ said, this story is captured in Matthew um, 19, 16, 22. Then Jesus said to the young rich ruler, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to, in, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. You know, we are going by the commandments again. Jesus Christ said, said that if you want to have eternal life, then, this is what I am saying to you, rich young man. Rich young man, this is what I'm saying to you. If you want to have eternal life, rich young woman or rich young man, keep all the commandments. Wow. Then the rich young ruler inquired from Christ, which commandments? And then Jesus Christ said, 
listen he said you shall not commit murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear for witness honor your mother and your father you shall love your neighbor as yourself then the rich young ruler said all these things are kept for my youth what do i still lack so in other words well i was born into a christian house i've been taught all the the, the, the things that i need to know and so the rich young man said all these things are kept and so what do i lack is asking jesus christ and then jesus christ said to the rich young man listen if you want to be perfect very important if you want to be perfect go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven come and follow me this is a this very interesting story the bible says when the young rich ruler heard the saying he went home sorrowful for he had a great possessions of very rich glory to god this is where the rich young ruler had come to face to face with the author of life and he want to he want eternal life and jesus christ i said this is what you have to do go and say all what you have and come and follow me come and follow me and the bible says the rich young ruler could not contain the words of lord jesus christ and he went home very sad in other words what happened is this things have possessed the rich young man instead of the instead of jesus Christ possessing him taking hold of his life using his life for, for for his own purpose the rich young ruler could not that doesn't mean that if you are rich you cannot enter into another life. no but rather the point is here is this instead of giving his life to jesus christ instead of allowing jesus to possess his life rather he allowed things to possess life, and so you work. You, you, I mean, you walk out of Christ. Note, yes, some face to face with the author of life, the only way to escape eternal condemnation. But the rich young ruler had opportunity, but the opportunity he had, he blew it. Many a time we have opportunity, and when we have opportunity, we have to open our eyes, we have to open our heart, and let the word of God sink into our heart. In that way we will get liberated understand that the greatest sin of this age we are coming back what is the world greatest sin understand that the greatest sin of this age and of every age is the rejection of jesus christ the only son of god and this way the young ruler you know you have come to face to face with the author of life of jesus christ but instead of accepting Jesus Christ and his way, he rejected this Christ and went, off, and went off. And this is what we all are doing. And so understand that the greatest sin of this age and every other age is the rejection of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Remember that everyone who has heard the gospel must either accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior or trample him and the food the rich young ruler heard him saw him he heard the word of god the word that only will lead him into eternal life but instead of accepting the word of jesus christ he went away this is what the generation are doing this is what our generation are doing we heard the word of god we heard great preachers we heard small preachers we are being in church but many, many people are walking away, not hearing the word of God, which is personified in the name in Jesus Christ Himself. And so, remember, we hear the word of God every day, we are hearing the word of God. And we have to either we have to accept the word of God, the saying of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, or we trample him underfoot. 
the people of Jesus Christ, they made their choices. Either to accept Jesus Christ, either to accept him as the Savior of the world. And we also, at this age, we also need to make our also choice as well. Everyone needs to make a choice. Either you accept the words of Jesus Christ, or either you reject the greatest sin of this age and all other age is rejection of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The rejection of Jesus Christ is the world's greatest sin. Jesus Christ is the true light that gives light to every man or every woman coming into this world. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The world that we live in is infected with, with, with great sin. And so, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so, the greatest sin of this world is rejecting Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ came to take away the sin of the world. And you go to say further, John the Baptist said, I've seen him, that is, I've seen Jesus Christ, and testify that he is the Son of God. Glory to God. John the Baptist said, I've seen him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I've seen him, and I want to testify that he is the Son of God. And so rejecting the Son of God is the greatest sin of every age, and the age that we are in right now. Glory to God. Also, the beloved of God, John, the one who wrote the, 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 the book of, of Revelation, he also captured this story very clearly in, in his, in his uh, epistle, 1 John 1, 1 to 3. John also captured this, 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 um, uh, this um, issue very clearly. This is what John 1, 1 to 3 says. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, <laughs> very impressive, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. Are you hearing me? He said, concerning the word of life, the life that was manifested and have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested to us that we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And here, John painted a clear picture of Jesus Christ, the one who took away the sin of the world. And so here, John the Revelator was saying, we have seen him, we have walked with him, we ate with him, we have fellowship with him, and because of that, we are transmitting an important message to you, that you hearing, by hearing, you may have fellowship with him. And so it means, when you reject Jesus Christ, you are rejecting. You are rejecting. It means, the world's greatest sin is rejecting Jesus Christ. It's rejecting Jesus Christ. And so, here, John the Beloved painted or pointed to us a vivid recollection of the person of Jesus Christ that John so had, had even in mind, even at his old age, he could recollect, he could have a, a vivid or mind picture of what he saw about Christ. And so he is re he's recollecting and he's transmitting that information to us that every age, one who hear, don't reject Jesus Christ. Don't reject Jesus Christ. For John, even to, I mean, 60 years later, those memories were permanently etched in his mind as if the events were just, had just happened. Glory to God. Look, John uses terms that uh, John used terms that strongly affirm the physical reality of Jesus Christ. The terms that he used affirm the physical reality of Jesus Christ. Now, the world greatest sin 
Titus also says something. The book of Titus. Chapter 2. Verse 11. Also says something. Which is important. We read it. He said. For the grace of God. That brings salvation. Has appeared to all men. Titus. Paul writing to Titus. Says. For the grace of God. That brings salvation has appeared to all men. Understand, we are talking about the world greatest sin. For the grace of God that brings salvation appeared to all men, all women, every generation. This is the grace of God. That Christ Himself, that is grace incarnate, God's supremely gracious life or gracious gift to Fallen mankind, all men, all women. Jesus Christ made a sufficient sacrifice to cover every sin of everyone who believes. Understand that every sin, every sin. And so rejecting Jesus Christ is the world's greatest sin. When we reject Jesus Christ, because Bible says, John says, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. And so when you reject Jesus Christ, you, that is the world greatest sin, world greatest sin, world greatest sin, believers. This is where John again captured for us in his gospel 3, 16 to 18. And he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, you see, he said, for God so loved the world. And so you could see that the world that John is talking about is not the world of trees, it's not the world of animals, it's not the world of donkeys, it's not the world of houses, but the world of organized human society made of man and woman. We consider society. I mean, uh, I mean the family unit, society. I mean man and woman. And so, for God loves you, man. God loves you, woman. And so, don't reject Jesus Christ because uh, for God so loved the world, love. And so, I mean, I mean, when you reject love, love is personified, or love is in the person of Jesus Christ. And so, when you reject love. You reject Jesus Christ because he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so, rejecting Jesus Christ, you reject God's love. Because Jesus, Jesus Christ, God gave him to come to this world. To take away the sin of this world. The world, uh, you know, has sinned. And so, accepting Jesus Christ, accepting God's salvation through, by accepting Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. So, when you accept Jesus Christ, you have escaped the world greatest sin. And that it means now, I mean, the, the way the eternal life is yours. It means the heaven is open to you. Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None can escape. And so the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Very, very important. Should not perish. And so two things are before us. Either you perish or you get into eternal life. When you reject Jesus Christ, you are going to perish. You are under condemnation. But when you accept him, you escape from the world greatest sin. Christ, by accepting Jesus Christ, you are no more under condemnation. And so he said, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he continued to say that, but have everlasting life. And he said, for God did not send his son into the world 
God did not send Jesus Christ to, earth, to no other planet but the earth over here because the earth was made for you and I to, to reside on this earth. Because, because when you read Genesis 1, say, Genesis 1 say, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The, for you and I to what, reside here to, you know, to, 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 to mold our life on this earth. So Christ came on this earth, no other planet but on the earth over here. And so he said, for God did not send his son the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. You got to be saved. You got to escape from this world greatest sin. You, you got to believe Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's, no, there's only one way. There's no two ways, no three ways. Nobody, but only Jesus Christ, as the Bible expressly says. As the Bible explicitly says, for, it says, for God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. I mean, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you are no more under condemnation. You are no more under condemnation by what? You have escaped the eternal condemnation. You are not under condemnation anymore because the, because the son Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, has what delivered you because the Bible says, expressed in Colossians, that said that what? He has delivered from the power of darkness and conveyed or translated into the, the, the kingdom of his son, the dear love. And so the Bible says, he who believes in him, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. And so, why? The world's greatest sin is not believing in Jesus Christ. The world's greatest sin is trampled under food. The world's greatest sin is rejecting unbelief. And so, if you are walking in unbelief, it doesn't matter your status. It, 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 it's like the rich young ruler. I mean, the Bible says he was rich. But when he got opportunity face to face with Jesus Christ, you walk over Jesus Christ because why? He was so rich, he went sorrowful. Look, listen, many, many people are rich, they are affluent, but they are sorrowful. Why? Because their life is without Jesus Christ. If you have if, if you don't have Jesus Christ, your life is nothing, your life is void. You are there's no hope because Jesus is the hope of this world. As the rich young ruler walk away from Jesus Christ, he's under condemnation. And so anyone that walk away from Jesus Christ, anyone that reject the gospel of good news, it doesn't matter whether you are sitting in the church or not in the church. I mean, you can sit in the church, but your heart can be possessed with unbelieving heart. But if you know, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, if you don't accept him as the Lord of law and as the King of kings and as the Savior of this world, and you walk over him, I mean, you are under condemnation. And he said, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Jesus Christ. And it's explicit. It is clear. The world greatest sin is not believing in Jesus Christ. It's walking away from Jesus Christ. It's not believing the light of this world. It means you are in darkness. You are in darkness. In fact, as I read in uh, Titus 2.14, it says, listen to what it says. Titus 1.2.14 says, continue, said, he who gave himself for us. It means Jesus Christ gave himself for us. And the son, he said, he who gave himself for that he may redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good work. I love this. I love this. He said, Jesus Christ, who take away the sin of this world, Jesus Christ, whom the Son set, Jesus Christ, that God said, for, for God so loved the world, God so loved you, God does not want you to, ship, to shipwreck with your life. God does not want you to destroy your life. God does not want you to mess your life. God does not want you to, to walk in darkness. God so loves you. 
The love of God is beyond description. And so he's saying, beloved, who hear me right now? The way good test, he said, Jesus Christ gave himself for us. That he might redeem us. It means redeem is no one redeem him, he bought. Christ has bought us from the power he has bought us. We were in the slave market. The animal was doing all sort of, uh, I mean, undesirable things. Was uh, uh, it, it was like, uh, you know, when the people of God, when the people, I mean, the, the people of Israel, when they were, uh, uh, they, they were in captivity uh, in the land of, uh, of Egypt, you know, they were slaves. And Pharaoh and his people were, they, they were, they were, they held them in bondage. And so they could do whatever they like to them. In, in, in the same perspective, God, the Bible is saying that God has redeemed us. God has bought it with his precious blood. God has bought it with his precious blood. The blood that was shed on Calvary. And so it means God has redeemed us from every lawless deed. Name it. Name all those things. Name it. You, in, in, in numerous. Every lawless deed. Every lawless deed. Every name it that we're captive to all those sins, lawless deeds, lawless works, lawless acts. We were, you know, we were under influence, we could not deliver ourselves. It is not by, about our good works, it, it, it is not by our intelligence. It is not by any act that we, we can deliver ourselves. No one can deliver himself. But at the opportune time, by the appropriate time, God sent his son Jesus to redeem us from every lawless act and deed. And listen, he said, and to purify for himself. Oh, glory to God. It means his blood cleanses of every lawless deed. Name it, all the sins that you did. All the sin that I could do, all the sin is every, every lawless act, every inclusive, everything. And then said, His own special people. Wow, wonderful. God has come down in the person of Jesus Christ and has adopted us and brought it into that that glorious family you are called a child of god that glorious family you are called the sons and the sons and the daughters of the most high god and god said now we are his own special people own special people we are, you know, we are out, and we are no more under condemnation, under condemnation, because the greatest sin of this world we have escaped. Why? Because we are saved, Jesus Christ. And so, as many accepted Jesus Christ, they are no more under the condemnation. God, you know, you have escaped from the greatest sin of this world. We are saved, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And He said, He continued further. His own special people, zealous for great works. Now zealous. Now we are zealous for great work. That great work is talking about the great work of Jesus Christ. You no, know, when God deliver you, when God set you free, and when God redeem you, He brought you to Himself and prepare you, ready for great work, for good works, and that is it. The greatest sin in all the world is the sin against love. It is sin at the worst rejecting Jesus Christ. Love is in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. And this moment, beloved, hear me. The greatest sin of this world is rejecting the Savior of this world. The greatest sin of this world is unbelief, not believing in the Son of God. The greatest sin of this world is walking away, trampled underfoot, the Son of the living God, whom John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The world is infected with sin. He knows crimes, the, the magnitude, naming every day. Name it numerous. 
How can you escape? You cannot. You cannot. Is somebody saying that? No. Uh, I can follow all the Ten Commandments. My friend, if you miss one, you are under condemnation. But if you accept Jesus Christ as the Son of the Living God, you are no more under condemnation. God, you have escaped from the wrath of the Living God. At this hour, I don't know your situation right now. I don't know what you are facing right now. But listen, just set your hearts, set your mind. Are you accepting Jesus Christ as the Son of the Living God? It doesn't matter your situation. When you have face to face with the with, with the Holy One of Israel, embrace Him. The rich one ruler had the greater opportunity in life to embrace Him, but he walk over very sad. The reason why many people are sad is that they have rejected the Holy One of Israel. They have rejected Jesus Christ. But the moment you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior, you are on the way to victory. The joy will be your strength. The joy of God will be your strength. Every day when you wake up, you have the joy because you know Him, the Son of the world, the Son of the living God. You know Him, the Word of life. You know Him. He the light of the world. He will be the, 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 the light of he the light of the world. I pray that today, as you hear, as you hear this word and accept him into your heart, and if you know him, know him more. Know him more because the Bible says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you know him, grow in that grace. Lord. Know more about him, and your joy will always get better. Your life will always get better. You are, I mean, your life will get better and better every day because you know him who he is. And you are growing him. And beloved, your life will not be the same. But if you don't know him, commit your life to him right now. Because the whole world, many, many have rejected him. And the world's greatest sin is rejecting Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I hope you will not reject him. I hope you, I mean, you embrace him into your life right now. I hope you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I need you. Without you, my life amounts to nothing. I need you. Come into my heart. I need you. I need you. I want to possess you. I want to embrace you. And I want to thank you because you died for my sins. May his name be praised. May his name be glorified. May his name be magnified. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful moment of sharing this word to your people. Everyone hearing me, Father, you know our situation more than ourselves. You know the hearers. Father, I pray that as this word go forth, it go with authority, it go with power, and accomplish the purpose by which this word was being delivered to your people. Set somebody loose, open their heart, give somebody illumination, give somebody understanding that henceforth his working with you will be better and better until you come. Thank you. I bless you. I honor you. In Jesus' gross name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, beloved. By God's willing, you'll hear me again. God bless you. Bye bye. We shall do some. I am going to say, Shall there be a new part to the Pagur? A wrong. It was all yes, as in by the world, Christ, who did a dance, yes, was it? Some two, let's say, you may now subscribe.